today we are going to start our second lecture of photochemistry but before starting our next lecture we take just review of the last lecture so in last lecture we have already discussed about what is mean by photochemistry so photochemistry is a branch of chemistry concerned with the chemical effect of light that is such reactions which are brought about by light are known as photochemical reactions may be in ultraviolet light visible light or in and some distinguishing points between photochemical and thermochemical reaction in that photochemical reactions are takes place in light energy and thermochemical reactions are takes place in presence of heat energy likewise for the photochemical reaction some important groups that are chromospheres must be present in the molecule and there will be no necessity of such a chromospheres in thermal reaction likewise we also discuss about excitation of electrons from ground state to excited state by absorption of photons from light and mechanism of photochemical reaction in that electronic transition and excited states so you can go through that slides and get the information from all of this so let's start our today's lecture in this lecture we are going to see jablonovsky's diagram in dissipation of energy and next point will be quantum yield or efficiency of a photochemical reaction so in this jablonovsky's diagram first see what is mean by dissipation of energy see whenever there is a change in a system energy is transferred and some of that energy is dissipated so dissipation is a term that is often used to describe ways in which energy is wasted here there is a, there will be some effects like fluorescence of light phosphorescence of light so this can be basically explained by jablonovsky's diagram so in this diagram we will discuss the changes which may take place during electronic transitions where a molecule absorb light energy let's see here in this diagram you can clearly see this s0 s1 s2 t1 t2 so s0 is a ground state s1 s2 are the singlet excited states different energy levels and also t1 t2 are the triplet states now see when molecule will absorb energy the electron will get excited to s1 or to s2 as per the energy absorbed by the molecule but it will not go from s0 to t1 or s0 to t2 see s0 to s1 or s2 means from ground state to singlet state is allowed transition ground state to singlet states are allowed transition but ground state to triplet state directly is forbidden transition so electron will not go to s0 to t1 or t2 it it can go to singlet state but it will not go to triplet state directly so it is a forbidden transition see if molecule absorb light energy then it will the electron will excite it if the absorbed energy is higher than the bond energy then the bond will splits up and may radical formation takes place are you getting my point if the absorbed energy is more than the bond energy then bond splits up and free radicals are formed this is the path a okay if the absorbed energy is less than bond energy then there is no splitting of bond the electron may be raised from lower most level that is s0 to any vibrational level maybe s1 or s2 as per the absorption of light okay this transition takes place so rapidly from s0 to s1 or s2 and it's within 10 to the minus 13 seconds that's the nuclei of two atom not have that that much time to change their positions according to the frank cordon principle so it will be in the singlet state only in the same spin the rays electron uh, you can say it by path b the rays electron rapidly drops to the lower most vibrational level of s1 by losing excess of vibrational energy so let's see path c this is known as a vibrational relaxation from the lower most this vibrational level of s1 now the electron may comes back to the ground state to s0 
either by giving out light energy we can it's we can call fluorescence d path or giving out heat energy okay it it one of the type of internal conversion so if it is come releases light energy then it gives fluorescence if the electron changes its spin it will cross over from s1 to t1 from s1 to t1 and this is known as inter system crossing that is path e the electron may relax itself vibrationally by coming down to the lower most vibrational level of t1 we can say path f relaxation and from t1 now it will comes to the ground state s0 so vibrationally relaxed electron comes back to s0 by giving out light energy that is called phosphorescence or giving out heat energy it's also one type of internal conversion but if it is in case vibrational relaxed electron comes back to s0 by giving out light energy then we can call it phosphorescence and phosphorescence have longer lifetime than fluorescence when the molecule absorb light energy and its electron go to the excited state but when its absorb energy is more than bonding energy the bond can be split out and ready free radical may formation takes place but if the absorb energy is less than bonding energy then just excitation of electron takes place and it's immediately wants to get to the ground state and it relaxes out by giving out energy so it's called vibrational relaxation by by this when they come to the lower most excited state then they emits out light energy and comes to the ground state called fluorescence in the same spin but if they convert their spin by intersystem crossing then they get from s2 to t2 means singlet to triplet state after that they again they come to the down state of the triplet state so it's called f relaxation afterward from triplet state to ground state by emitting out energy in form of a light called phosphorescence so next point is quantum yield or efficiency of a photochemical reaction for a perfect efficiency of a photochemical reaction one molecule of the reactant should react or one molecule of product should be formed on absorption of one quantum of light see one molecule of reactant should be react or one molecule of product should be formed on absorption of one quantum of light this is known as law of photochemical equivalence so the quantity phi that is the quantum yield phi can be given as phi is equal to number of molecule reacting or form in a unit time divided by number of quantas of radiation absorb in unit time number of molecule reacting or form in a unit time or number of divided by number of quantas of radiation absorb in the unit time means in the quantas of radiation absorb in unit time number of quantas of radiation absorb in unit time how much amount of molecule react or form in a unit time the ratio of this gives you quantum yield so according to the law value of phi should be 1 but it is rarely found to be so and in practice value of phi ranges from 10 to to minus 2 to 10 to 4 why it is so this is because the photochemical reaction involves two processes means first process second process usually called primary process secondary process so first process first is absorption of energy to produce an excited molecule and it is called primary process and it obeys the law of photochemical equivalence and second is in which the product of primary process undergo further reactions Pr product of primary process undergo further reactions to form the second product it's called secondary process and hence for the total reaction the value of phi has wide ranges so it should be one but it not constant at one it ranges from 10 to minus 2 to 10 to 4 because of this big 
that the reaction goes to primary and secondary process again next is calculation of quantum yield how actually calculation of quantum yield will be done in photochemical reactions so according to the stark einstein law each molecule taking part in the reaction absorbs one and only one quantum of radiation causing the reaction so in chemical photochemical reaction one molecule in the reaction absorb only one quantum of energy for the reaction so the absorption of quantum of light energy results in some primary steps and these primary steps are followed by so several secondary steps and these secondary steps are taking place without light energy so they are called as a dark or thermal reactions as they are uh, taking place um, in a dark or light energy is not involved so according to the stark einstein law each molecule is activated by only one quantum of light so quantum means h nu hence one mole of reacting species will absorb n of energy where n is apocryphal number that is 6.023 into 10 raised to 23 per mole hence energy absorbed is given by e is equal to h nu where h is the planck's constant and nu is equal to c by lambda so c is the velocity of light and h is the wavelength so formula turns to e is equal to h into c by lambda so in whole formula all are constant so therefore all things are depend upon the wavelength of light as e is equal to h into c by lambda h is a planck constant c is the velocity of light and wavelength is only variable so as how much energy we supply to the molecule it will excite so excitation of molecule only depends upon lambda as all other points are constant let's see determination of quantum yield by using actinometer actually for the determination of quantum yield we can use different methods like experimental method by using actinometer or by titration method so in case of actinometry determination of quantum yield involve number of molecules undergoing photochemical reaction and second one number of quanta radiation absorbed the instrument used for the determination of quantum yield is known as actinometer and the process is known as actinometry so in case of actinometer actinometer has following components source regular monochromator then there is a reaction cell and last one is reactor so we just go in deep see some like this type of structure will be there so in case of a source tungsten lamp and high pressure mercury discharge lamps are used in the visible region and hydrogen or deuterium deuterium lamps are used as a source of uv light the light emitted by source is collimated by lens and then passes into monochromator so different type of sources are used as per the um, different type of radiations so tungsten lamp and high pressure mercury lamp, discharge lamps are used in the visible region and hydrogen or deuterium lamps are used in the uv light okay then monochromator it transmits a particular wavelength required for experiment and absorb all other radiations so it will passes only particular wavelength what we require only then in case of a reaction cell it is a quartz vessel which does not absorb any light radiation the cell which contains reaction mixture is kept in a thermostat to attain constant temperature when monochromatic light passes through reaction mixture photochemical reaction occurs a part of light absorbed and rest is transmitted the intensity of transmitted light is then measured using a detector the difference indicates the mole of reactant converted into product and lastly detector 
it is a device to measure intensity of transmitted light coming from the reaction cell chemical actinometers are usually used to measure the intensity of transmitted light so in case of uranyl oxalate actinometer an actinometer contains mixture of oxalic acid and uranyl ion of a known concentration when light falls on the mixture and activates the uranyl ion so after falling a light uranyl ion get activated this activated uranyl ions decomposes the oxalic acid so we have known concentration of uranyl ion concentration that concentration will decomposes the oxalic acid to the known concentration c how can concentration of undecomposed oxalic acid is determined by titration against standard kmno4 so this decrease in concentration of oxalic acid is proportional to the amount of transmitted light coming from the reaction cell the experiment is carried out first with empty cell and then with a cell containing reaction mixture the difference in the decrease of oxalic acid concentration in the actinometer gives the amount of light absorbed by reaction mixture so this difference so here we completed our this point and in next lecture we are going to see some important points too that is photosensitization and most important quenching process thanks a lot